His thinking in the next few hours, the crossbench, meanwhile, of this 47th parliament is going to be much larger than the previous one, partly because of that result. Let's bring in independent member for Indi, Helen Haynes, who, of course, was already in the last parliament. Thanks very much for your time. So the crossbench growing, you're not actually a teal independent. Do you see yourself as part of this incoming group? Oh, good afternoon, Tom. Um, I'm delighted to be returned as the federal member for Indi, and I return to the crossbench now with some great experience under my belt. I think what we've seen across the nation with more independents now um, taking or about to take their seat in parliament is a third way of doing politics in this country, and I'm thrilled to be part of that. So in terms of where you see yourself, though, uh, I know it's not homogenous. I know you're from right around the country, and as I said, you're not technically a teal, but do you, do you see yourself as partly a, a part of this group? Well, I see myself as an independent member for Indi, a rural and regional Australian MP. So uh, I'm quite different uh, in terms of the constituency I represent. But what I would say is that uh, the independent members coming from places like Wentworth, North Sydney, Kooyong, Goldstein, uh, McKellar, uh, have a strong mandate uh, and a strong message from their communities on climate change and on integrity. And uh, I've been a leader in the 46th Parliament on calling for a strong Federal Integrity Commission and have uh, a very strong bill uh, that I can uh, put forward to the mm. people again. Uh, so we're very much united on my Australian Federal Integrity Commission bill and I have a, a strong message from Indi on, uh, on, on a, uh, uh, a climate action that brings rural and regional Australians right into the picture and uh, brings prosperity prosperity into regional Australia as we transition to renewables. So uh, we have strong, uh, I think, strong uh, allegiance on those two issues in particular. So when you're looking at sort of, I suppose, um, in, in one sense trying to exercise power, but I guess more accurately have a bit of clarity to your view, all is this type of independent, is there going to be some value maybe in regular meetings where you decide who's in this cohort, happy to call yourself um, community independence, whatever the tag might be, but you, you don't need uniformity, but you have a, a bit of general purpose around climate and a target around National Integrity Commission. Do you think you need uh, that sort of cohesive message out there? I think um, what we will do as independent members on the crossbench uh, is, is speak regularly, uh, just as we do, or just as I do, um, or have done in the past with the government of the day. Uh, collaboration is really important in order to, to bring forward uh, policy that works on things that we're united on. So uh, climate will be one of those. I actually have uh, stronger climate targets around 2030 than some of the other independent MPs. Um, uh, you know, right. there's... There's areas where, of course, um, we'll come together and talk about what's the best way that we can work effectively for the Australian people, uh, for the parliament, to really get progress. I think what Australians have shown is they're sick to death of conflict, they're sick to death of ideology and poor representation. They want the values of their uh, electorate to be reflected by their MP in the House, uh, and I think uh, there's much work that we'll be able to do together on the crossbench, but there'll be areas that we, we, we don't have uh, consistency on. So um, okay. uh, I, I'm very, very so I guess, keen yeah. with my parliamentary colleagues. So I guess trying to find that, that consistency, is it worth having, for want of a better description, semi-regular party room meetings where you can figure out where you have clear similarities and you're not presenting, say, 11 slightly different national integrity commissions? Oh, of course, Tom. Um, what we have on the crossbench is some very, very sensible people, and uh, we know how to get things done in our in our previous professional lives. And you only get things done that you you are united on by being pragmatic and sensible, and having regular meetings and finding a clear pathway forward. When it comes to integrity, right. so, um, I've done the work on that, and I think we've heard yeah. uh, from those uh, teal independents that they're very supportive of my uh, Australian Federal Integrity Commission bill. So it would be silly to uh, reinvent the wheel on that. Right. No, I know. But, you know, you do get down to specifics and someone finds something in there they're a bit iffy on. So, so sorry, just to be really clear, are we talking regular meetings every month or two, everyone that agrees to be part of it and, and sitting down and sort of try to thrash out positions on things? Is that how you envisage it working? 
Well, I, I envisage we will have regular meetings, of course, but um, right now some seats aren't determined. Curtin, for example, is still in the mix. Uh, none of these uh, new independents have been to Parliament before, and uh, certainly those of us who are more experienced will be uh, working uh, to assist them as they get settled in, and that will involve some meetings, of course, but that's that's all to be, to be determined. The Parliament will probably sit okay. uh, well, maybe late June, early July. Let's Let's see how that goes. All right. Now, now, for all the talk of that, as we stand, our projection has Labor on 76 or 77 seats and you don't have a, a presence in terms of this group in the Senate. Is there a possibility you don't actually have any relevance in this parliament? What we have uh, is a, a vastly expanded crossbench in the House and I took a call this morning uh, from the Prime Minister who made it very clear to me that he wishes to have a strong, collaborative and respectful relationship with the crossbench. Uh, I think this is the most significant change in Australian politics. We'll be seeing the crossbench in the House of Representatives do fantastic things as they work uh, with the Labor government. And uh, we always, uh, in the past, have worked very closely uh, with our senators, as, with other senators. Uh, we don't need to be aligned in the colour of the T-shirts we wear. Uh, what we are uh, seeking to do is to work effectively on policy and ideas that bring the nation uh, to the best place it possibly can be. So on that phone call, there, was there a pledge from Anthony Albanese, even though it looks as though he won't need your vote, to actually consult with you on legislation and get your view on things at least? Uh, Mr Albanese made it very clear uh, that he has great respect for the crossbench and wishes to consult with us as much as he possibly can. That, that was very made very clear to me uh, and I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that. That's how it should be. And uh, he knows that the numbers are tight and that things can change in a parliament as well. But outside of that, uh, I, I heard a very strong, um, a strong sense from him, more than a sense, uh, uh, his word really, that it was his intention to have a very respectful parliament and uh, a parliament that uh, sees good ideas come forward and sees okay. people work together.